Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, today, uh, I've worked with Zahn to kind of go over uh, digital dentures. What we've seen in digital dentures, the big revolution of digital dentures is there's a lot of interest and there's a lot of need for proper education. Uh, I would like to share uh, what we've learned about them, how we do them, why we think they're important, and why we think you're going to like them. So how to complement your traditional denture lab with digital dentures. Um, so my name is Milos Markovic, as Brent mentioned, a CDT. I'm a cat, uh, director of CATCAM at Aurora Digital Technology Center in Wapitress Falls. Uh, I've been in dentistry my whole life. Um, my dad's a dentist, my aunt's a dentist. I studied restorative dentistry in Europe, in the United States. And uh, he, I've worked with many clinicians, Cronenbridge Labs, uh, dental milling centers, notably uh, Nobel BioCare, uh, Denmat, and including Aurora today. So I try to bring a lot of that knowledge into Aurora. What we do at Aurora is we focus heavily on helping the lab owners deal with very complex cases that they receive from dentists. We help them any step along the way, whether it's just milling for them, it can be milling and finishing, it can be just problem solving on how to get the componentry right for implant cases, how do we get the case from this stage to that stage. So this presentation is, is written uh, from a perspective of really seeing everything through the eyes of the dental lab and the lab owner and how to help you succeed. And that's what we try to do every day. So that's that's why I'm here today. So about dentures. So the goal today is to go over what makes traditional dentures great, what aspects need an improvement, what are the benefits of doing digital dentures, and uh, what are the challenges in order to get them right. So these are kind of the little things that we need to go over to kind of bring everything into perspective. So what makes traditional dentures great? Uh, dentures have been one of the most affordable restorations in the world. They're also one of the most common restorations around the world. Uh, if you see the sheer number of dental restorations in the entire planet, you're going to see that the traditional denture is the number one restoration. It's had a long time to mature. It is uh, widely available. The acrylics, the denture teeth have evolved quite a bit, and uh, it still rules to this day. Also, one of the bigger benefits of uh, traditional dentures is that the, the carded teeth that are used in traditional dentures have very good aesthetics. They've also had a lot of time to mature, uh, and uh, they provide some of the best aesthetics that can be acrylic or porcelain. Um, obviously, it depends on, depending on your preference, but this is what made traditional dentures great. So the available materials um, and talented technicians, another two factors that are important for digital dentures, uh, for traditional dentures. Uh, like we said, over time, companies, when you have a product in the marketplace for so long, which could be several decades when you look at the traditional dentures, many companies have had a long time, uh, a really long time to uh, really fine tune the chemistry and the physics behind the material. So material science has really helped them evolve. The materials have gotten better, more affordable, uh, stronger, more aesthetic. And so some of the notable examples, you would have Dense Placeron and Ivoclar kind of being in that space. And also the same companies have been able to carry over some of that traditional material knowledge into the digital denture foyer as well. And uh, my favorite subject that I like to talk about is the availability of talented, talented, talented technicians and the availability of labor. Um, because the market is in a, uh, the, the product is in a marketplace for so long, you have, uh, you know, a lot of people got to train on it, use it, devote their careers to it. So we still have a good amount of um, denture technicians available in the market. However, as my favorite subject is what's been happening in the last few years, we've seen as the industry veterans are kind of retiring and the new technicians are coming into play, we are losing slowly but surely on that talent. So being having an opportunity to really take the knowledge from these, these industry veterans, take all the traditional denture knowledge and carry it over into digital dentures is really important. So this is why, uh, why this aspect is so important. What aspects needed an improvement? So this is sort of like the reality check. As 
even though we all like dentures quite a bit, traditional dentures, uh, there was there were a lot of issues with time and labor. They're very labor intensive uh, restorations to produce, especially compared to something that you have today, like full counter zirconia or um, even screw retain zirconia, even screw retain hybrids. The, some of the more complex restorations, the traditional denture is still more labor intensive than that. Why? We have to things like tooth setup and wax. We have flasking and boil out, acrylic packing and curing, devasting, cleanup and polishing. So even though some of the more skilled denture technicians might say, oh, but I do my setup in 30 minutes only and 40 minutes only and I can pack real quick. These are very uh, labor intensive, uh, very messy processes uh, that are simply baked into the, into the production of the denture. So, when we talk about digital dentures and the people that I spoke to that work on these materials, the main focus of creating digital dentures was to address the time and labor necessary to replace these four steps that I mentioned here. So when you think about digital dentures, you should really focus on the production side of it and not necessarily on the data acquisition that's still the same, such as getting a, a model and an impression, which we're going to cover uh, later. Um, so, what aspects need an improvement again? The repairs. So, <laughs> dentures can have frequent repairs. Um, it can cause a lot of stress and waste of time. Uh, they might not be as reliable. Uh, you know, those repairs can be unpredictable. Um, they're also removable of restoration. So, you can easily lose them, break them. The dog can eat them. You know, a neighbor can steal them. So, uh, overall, patients and doctors invested a lot of time if the denture ever have had to be replaced or remade. So one of the main benefits for um, digital dentures is that that remake process has been simplified extensively and uh, we're going to show how. So what are the benefits of doing digital dentures? So now that we know what made traditional dentures great and what are the pros and cons, the digital to setup uh, and the printing uh, it's kind of like the main staple of digital dentures. The production efficiency is the main emphasis, right? You want to be efficient, you want to be fast, you don't want to be messy, you want to have that consistency every single time. And so digital to setup uh, replaces the wax, there's no mess, clutter, just mouse and a keyboard, maybe a hot cup of tea, and that's all you need. And you can knock out a really good denture in about you know 30 minutes, depending on the skill. Obviously, the, the time varies, but if we really want to put time into it, it's about 30 minutes that we give our designers to uh, to do a digital denture design. Then from that point on, it just goes straight to 3D printing. We're able actually to turn around digital dentures within a day um, because it's such an efficient process of production. Uh, so printing replaces the flasking, the boil up, the packing, and the curing. An average print job takes about 100 minutes. And now, on the picture, you see a single denture on a tray. But on that single uh, build platform, we can put up to like eight different dentures. And so, while those eight dentures are printing, you have so much more time available to do other things. Uh, another thing is fit and finish of the borders. So, when I talk to my peers, when I do research, I always read about the same thing. Uh, it's sort of like this uh, unifying um, theme that goes through our digital dentures is that their fit is really great and the borders uh, are, are really great. So the reason for that is because we have dental scanners, desktop scanners, that are able to capture really high amount of detail that you couldn't capture from an impression before. Remember with elastic impressions, you have a lot of variables. Um, yeah, you have a lot of stone expansion that can vary based on the season or how the technician had mixed it at the time or small er errors. But with um, scanning, uh, uh, with desktop scanners, whether scanning directly from the impression, we find that uh, we're getting uh, really cr crazy amounts of detail. And so one of the reasons why the, the, those dentures are fitting uh, that way is that, and also the borders of the denture, the digital denture, denture design allows for uniform, very well-rounded border of denture. So you, you, off the get-go, that, that feature that's created in the digital software uh, allows for a really smooth fit. Um, connecting the T to base along with the final code takes about an hour. And uh, process such as printing and curing allows for automation 
which results in more available time to do additional work. So we've had moments when we had our doctor technicians kind of like, you know, do all the designs, set them up for printing, and then they go, oh, what should I do now? I have nothing else to do. Exactly. So they find so many other things to do. We find the things to do. At a milling center, there's always something to do. So uh, the next uh, thing I wanted to mention is obviously going into that, <coughs> excuse me, is remakes. Um, happy just because no more remakes. Obviously, we will have remakes, but the remake process for digital dentures is a breeze. We've experienced it a few times um, for a variety of reasons that I mentioned before, why you, you would need to replace a denture, and the process has been really, really smooth. So the remake process goes like this. You make the call, lab sends the STL, and you're done. What do I mean by that? Um, there's a digital record of the denture that you've designed. So, and there's also a record of the, the two, car to two setup that was used um, for that particular denture. And so once we have all that information, if the patient ever loses a denture or needs to replace it or whatever, needs to duplicate a backup, we simply pull the all STL before the patient ever shows up at the dentist's office, before he really does anything, he just needs to say that he needs it. We will have the denture printed and the teeth glued in and finished within a day and have it delivered at the dentist's office before the patient even shows. And because this denture has already been verified in the patient's mouth, we have that record. So there's gonna be very little chair time at the, uh, uh, at the dentist's office. So this is one of the smoothest processes I've ever seen uh, for remakes. Kind of like single, uh, single zirconia crown, works the same way, but when you put it in the perspective of denture that required so much labor before in order to do that, that's, that's a real game changer. Uh, my idea was to, if I was a dentist, which I'm not, but if I was, um, every time I would sell a denture to a patient, I would give them a very inexpensive USB flash drive with an STL file of the denture base, and I would give them one set card of teeth as a backup, put it in a box, either save it myself or have the patient save it. If they ever, throughout life, in 10, 15, 20 years, they travel somewhere, they go to another country, city, town, whatever, they can go ahead and just go to whichever dentist or lab they want to go to, give them those files, and the denture will be reproduced exactly the way it was before. That's the kind of redundancy that's just making everyone's life uh, easier. So huge benefit. And if they have a break, we always suggest actually reprinting them. It's much more efficient to do it that way than to go ahead and repair it. But if you ever do want to repair it or realign it, you can do that with the Lucido 99, 199. So what are the tooth options? Uh, teeth can be milled, printed, and they can be carded teeth. So the benefit of milled teeth um, is that, you know, the, those discs are rare, uh, relatively inexpensive. Um, some company, sometimes we mill them out of PMMA, uh, because that's what people request. Uh, there are some companies like IOCOR that make specific discs just um, for denture teeth, um, and that really depends on your personal preference. We still have to, I, I've still yet to see, um, I've yet to see material, mill material that's excellent aesthetically, that's actually meant for a digital dentures, but I'm sure they're working on it. When it comes to printed teeth, which we're gonna mention some stuff later in the presentation about what's currently available, what's coming to the market, but uh, generally speaking, there was a first generation of 3D printed resins that came out onto the market, uh, Form Labs and others, and they were okay, but they were lacking aesthetics quite a bit. And so that was that's the main sort of that was the main sort of downside to 3D 3D printed teeth. However, in the last year or two, which I will mention later, there's been some new development that's really exciting, and also very inexpensive to make. You don't have to mill anything, you just set it to the printer, it prints it real quick, and it prints it at a very high resolution, so you're not really limited by the size of the milling burr. And the third, obviously, the, 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 the staple of the product is the carded teeth. We, for Lucitone uh, dentures, use uh, exclusively we use um, uh, Densply IPN 3D denture teeth, and uh, we've had nothing but uh, great feedback. Um, the system works, uh, it gives us quite a wide range of, of possible combinations for different patients, and um, it's easy for us to stock it. So we, we like to stick with one system, and that's what we've been certified on, what to work with digital denture. So we like those teeth. Um, and again, the main benefit, aesthetics. It is the most aesthetic 
denture tooth out there available, anything from car to teeth. doesn't just have to be from Dentsply. There's a million out there, and they're all pretty great, actually. So a big question that we get about digital dentures is, can I use an intraoral scanner for digital dentures? And so I have to say yes and no, uh, maybe, sometimes. What does that mean? So uh, when we talked about stone cast before, the big benefit of uh, making a custom tray and doing a functional impression and making a custom tray and, and then pouring that is that you uh, capture the entire vestibular area, right? So you capture the labial frenums, the vestibular areas, the buccal frenums, the tuberosities, the, the retromolar pads, the vibrating line, the posterior palatal seal, all of that stuff. It's uh, elastomeric impressions, elastic impressions uh, are really good. Um, at capturing soft tissue. They kind of set them in place and that's it. Intraoral scanners struggle quite a bit to capture fully dentulous areas. They, uh, they're really meant to bounce off of hard surfaces like teeth. Um, if you're a smooth operator on a digital scanner, you can get quite a bit of, out of something, let's say uh, a rugae on a palatal side. But whenever it comes to a vestibular area, you start moving towards cheeks, that's when you run into a lot of trouble those frenums and the cheeks are constantly moving. It's a very fluid, soft tissue, and it's really hard for intraoral scanners to capture that. And so you end up with something like the picture on the right, where you see a lot of those areas missing on the intraoral scan. And so I say a definitive no on a denture uh, that we're gonna, that the patient is gonna permanently wear or something that really needs to be done right. So I came up with a saying, intraoral scan, is an immediate denture fan. What does that mean? That means that you can use it maybe sometimes if you're gonna do um, a, an immediate denture. Why? Because an immediate dentures get realigned by definition. You know, a lot of teeth get extracted. Um, you have to mess with tissue, smooth things out. A lot of things are fluid and constantly changing. So by definition, whether you do it digitally or traditionally, you're gonna have to realign it. And because an intraoral scanner would have some of those areas missing, by the time you realign the denture, the denture material is going to pick up some of those areas. So uh, when dentists ex insist on us using intraoral scanners, that's what we usually tell them, that they're really good for um, immediate dentures. And you can see what's marked in um, red. The outline is really all that stuff that's missing in, in relation to regular stone cast. And so uh, on the top, there's a famous quote from my favorite video game, Mortal Kombat. There is no knowledge that is not power. Uh, why is all this important, right? Okay, why do I need to worry about all this? Okay, maybe they're cool, maybe they're not, but why is this really important? Well, it's because of trends, if everything's going. And uh, what, is, what do I mean by that? I'm, uh, there's a lot of young technicians coming into the fold. Uh, it allows, if you do them at your lab and you have technicians who are quite the veterans in the field, it's only beneficial to have newer technicians who, is maybe, who are maybe more skilled using the computer and doing digital dentures, it's very beneficial to train them on the fundamentals of denture, uh, dentures. They need to know functional aspects of occlusion, critical aspects of aesthetics, deep understanding of material science behind tolerances and flexibility and thicknesses. So they're only gonna get that knowledge if they work with some of the industry veterans that you have, some of the older technicians that work um, at, your, uh, at your lab. And so training them only allows to, uh, for younger technicians to take all that knowledge and actually make improvements on the process. If they don't have the fundamentals, they'll never be able to make improvements and make the product better, more efficient, um, and give really good positive feedback on, on how to make it better in the future. And then staying competitive, right? Uh, if the market is moving in a particular direction, you want to have access to some of the newest technologies for your lab to stay relevant and also to make the product better so that the reputation that your lab has built on traditional dentures carries over into the, into the new um, offerings out there. And so where's the excitement in the field? So there's two kind of, I don't want to mention two things. One is what we're currently using uh, in terms of materials and what's being developed, what's currently coming to the market. And um, so there's really two main things. But before I mention that, it's there's been a lot of investment in these different companies, different material companies, different dental companies, in quality, strength, aesthetics, and affordability of denture material 
especially the printed material. So everything's leaning towards printing. So everybody's working really hard to come up with a material that's sort of like the ultimate material for printing dentures. Why? It is much easier for vendors to give you a liter of tooth resin and a liter of denture resin, sell it to you, and then you go ahead and 3D print it. You don't have to worry about inventory so much, like you have to wor worry with carded teeth and deliveries and things like that. It's also more efficient. It's easier for you to, to produce it that way and keep stock of resin, not necessarily denture teeth. Um, and, uh, and then overall, uh, we want things done, as always, quicker, faster, better. And uh, one main player, as we, I mentioned, is the Lusitone still. It is very high quality material. It is what we've been using um, at, the, at the milling center, sort of like our main material. Um, it is just, it is the most, how should I say it? It's probably the most efficient at, at doing this. It is so consistent. It is, we've had, never had any fractures with it. It, it. it works really well. The protocol for it has been worked out. It can be relined, so many different things about it. And so we use, as obviously, like I mentioned, IP and 3D teeth for it. It's a very strong material. We tried to run it over a few times with a, with a car and didn't quite work out for the car. Um, so it was really strong material. And um, it has this thing called a BAM, which is body activated material. After, after, after you do your final cure of denture, it doesn't actually achieve its full strength until the patient puts it in their mouth. And with intraoral and uh, internal body temperature, it actually gets stronger. So it's, it's kind of like a weird material, but it's really good. And uh, so far, no issues with it. The only time we had to remake it is if it got lost or eaten or stolen. So now this is the exciting stuff. Um, a lot of companies are coming onto the market with, like I said, with new materials because they're putting a lot of effort into developing them. But uh, Desktop Health has this new offering um, called Flexera Base and Flexera Smile. It is a hybrid ceramic resin with optimal translucency and awesome strength. So and this is where I think the future of the material is going to be. It's going to be with these hybrid-like materials that take some of the properties of ceramics and, uh, and composites and acrylics and kind of mix it all together and to give us the ultimate material. Um, it's extremely strong material. We're still testing it here at the facility. So far we've had really good results and we're gonna try to incorporate it more and more into our milling center. Whatever new comes to the market, we don't have a preference. If it's good, we're gonna wanna use it. But before we make sure that we can use it, we, we're gonna wanna test the bejesus out of it. So uh, this is something that we've been working on and other companies are also coming out with their offerings so just be on the lookout of, of these new denture uh, 3D printing resins that are coming to the market. Um, but that's, that's pretty exciting. And so what are the challenges in order to get the digital dentures right? So just to go over, when you interact with your dentist, kind of, you know, you want to make sure that you get your uh, things in order so everything's executed correctly. So you need superior and consistent data acquisition. What does that mean? Don't try to deviate from the process of getting data acquisition. Don't rely too much on intraoral scanners. Make sure you do your custom tray, do your bite rim, um, you do your um, a nice um, a stone cast, your master model. And, uh, and then from that point on, the process becomes digital. But up to that point, don't try to take shortcuts. And another also a good advice is sometimes denture uh, labs would use a certain set of teeth, send it for try-in, but then they want to convert it into a digital denture. And that particular set might not be compatible with what's available in a digital library for the denture. So if you're going to do a wax setup, it's always good to take those carded teeth that have their match in a library for digital dentures so that what you designed virtually will match with what you had sent out um, on a physical uh, wax up model. And uh, what do you do if you don't have designers? We keep talking about designing, designing, but what if I don't have any designers? Well, uh, there are many design services out there. Notably here, we'll mention uh, that Henry Schein has their own prosthetic, prosthetic design uh, services. Um, and they offer a lot, of more, a lot more things than just digital dentures. They offer surgical guides, crown and bridge, partial frameworks, um, and 3D models, and night guards, I mean, everything you can possibly imagine. And so that's another tool that you have at your disposal. If you're a lab that doesn't have those young technicians yet that need to be groomed into doing digital dentures, it is uh, good to find a good milling um, design center and uh, even a milling center if you don't have 3D printers in-house 
and to uh, rely uh, on those services and really work with them because these services, from what we've tried, they work really closely with you because they all also want to succeed. So they really want to give you what you're looking for and they can customize your designs just for you uh, with how you like to get your dentures done. So that's pretty cool. And so at the end, you might say, okay, I'm ready. Um, let's do this. So how do I do this? Show me every single step from start to finish. And uh, I will show you that um, next week, uh, next Wednesday, we're going to go through every single step. These are some of the preview videos that you see of how to do um, digital dentures from start to finish, starting from data acquisition all the way to final delivery um, of the denture. And uh, with that, I thank you for joining us today. And we're going to open up the panel, I guess, Fran, for uh, some questions. Yes, Milos, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is, is there a type of resin that can fabricate flexible partials? So with flexible partials, what we usually do on a digital side is we have a, a acetyl resin and we have Duraflex. And these are actually blocks, these are milling pucks. And we uh, obviously do the design digitally, but then we make mill flexible partials out of that particular material. On a 3D printed resin side, we still haven't found something that's quite mainstream, although there are some startup companies that um, have actually developed um, some uh, 3D printed resins and that can potentially replace Valplast, but that's still something that's currently being developed. Um, but I would strongly recommend right now, for right now, to rely on something like Acetyl or Duraflex uh, resin for your uh, partial frameworks. The benefit of doing those is that, uh, especially with acetyl resin, you can get those frameworks really thin and they still maintain their strength and flexibility. Thank you. The next one is, how much do I charge or how do I set my fee structure? That's a good one. Um, well, um, to give an example, at Aurora here, we would uh, charge $149 for digital dentures full from uh, fully finished, so from design, printing, and finished. Um, how much you charge really depends of, of how much do you usually charge to your dentist uh, for your denture work. Um, what I would say is a lot of labs have developed sort of like a two-tier system where they do digital dentures, but they do them in a very sort of like basic, more streamlined form, and that's sort of like their budget denture, um, and then then they have same digital denture created with maybe some customizations or layering or uh, modifications to make them more aesthetic and that's kind of like their high tier um, denture so usually like i said we do it for about 150 dollars and different labs across the country really sell them at, at quite different prices um but um, that would be my suggestion okay and the next one is what are my material options for printed teeth so for printed teeth, um, like we said, right now we have uh, you, you have something on, on the lower end spectrum, which is something like the Form Labs, um, and then you have something like Flexera that we mentioned. Um, printed teeth can be done on a variety of printers, so it doesn't just have to be done on something like a carbon. It can be done on almost any um, any 3D printer. But I would uh, say that right now until you know, materials like Flexera that I mentioned become more mainstream. The, the, what, what's, what you're giving up with some of the printed teeth options is uh, the aesthetics, um, but you're gaining a lot of convenience because they can be produced quite easily. And you don't have to worry about the stock of carded teeth. You can just pour your resin or just keep printing them. You can get quite a few teeth um, out of a single liter of resin. So that would kind of be um, like you have quite limited options in terms of looking for high aesthetics, but quite a few option, options in just looking for um, regular um, 3D printed uh, resin for denture teeth. Okay, the next one is how easy is it to characterize printed teeth? So it works in a sense like um, working on, a, on an acrylic or a PMA bridge. So if we take a, a Pima main material, uh, we would cut it back and we would layer some gradia, some GC gradia on top of it. So in terms of the difficulty, it's the exact same equivalent of you uh, characterizing your Pima main bridge. 
uh, usually what you end up doing is you put some texture characterization, very light because you can get a lot of that texture from the design itself because the printer can also get a lot of that fine detail. Um, but you're mostly gonna have to focus on a little bit of uh, individuality um, to, to individualize the teeth uh, a little bit. And then you're looking at about half a millimeter cutback. So you can go ahead and uh, you know maybe layer some composite or um, you can do some, some glazing there um, and light staining. Um, I would say it's a very labor intensive um, process. And uh, if you're going to do it, you're definitely gonna have to include it in your fee structure when you sell that uh, denture to, um, to your dentist. And this is the last question that I had. Is it common practice to try in digital dentures before going to the final? That's a good, yes and no, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so we have, out of, let's say, 50 dentists that we deal with today, maybe 20 of them are going to say they're going to want to do a try -in, and 30 of them are going to say, no, go straight to finish. Um, if the bite rim um, has been done correctly, or instead of the bite rim, if the old denture has been provided, sort of like for the guide for aesthetics and the occlusion, <clears throat> we see that a lot of times um, dentists do not require uh, a try -in. It is part of the digital denture protocol to fabricate a try-in. That one is usually done in a fully white resin as a single piece. Um, it gets 3D printed. It's actually, in Lucitone's case, it's the exact same Lucitone resin. It's just with a different pigment, and everything's printed in just one piece, and you send it out. Um, but I really found that um, we, obviously, as a lab, always recommend it. We do not warranty our dentures if they do not get a try-in. Um, but a lot of uh, people don't care, <laughs> so they do it anyway, uh, probably because it's not that um, expensive to go ahead and remake it if they have to. Um, but since it's, it's a material you can realign, um, a lot of times um, they might do a, a minor realign on a denture, a minor modification, but uh, that's, that's really it. The reason why we uh, try to avoid, uh, we were able to avoid a lot of remakes is because we took out intraoral scanning from the initial process completely. We really focus on getting that functional impression from custom tray um, and uh, the bite rim and the, the proper cast. Once we get that and proper occlusion, we put a lot of emphasis on that. There's very little that we have to deal on the back end digital ventures. Mm -hmm.